Hey y'all, it's Amber. Welcome to my whoa. Welcome to my channel. Whether you're a first time visitor, returner, subscriber, welcome, welcome, happy to have you. So I do apologize if my energy is not as high this particular video, hopefully it'll perk itself up. I just think that in regard to everything that's happening and the climate that we're in and kind of the context of why I am even feeling this video, of uh, filming this video, not feeling, filming. This video kind of speaks to where we are as a society, where I am as a, an educator, where I am as a black woman. So as a result, I decided to compile several lists that I am going to be sharing in a series of videos. And those are going to kind of be placed within the already scheduled videos that I had going up and ready to go. So just stick around if you haven't already go ahead and hit that subscribe button i have a lot of great content that is coming out for you and if you want to be aware make sure to hit the notification bell as well so that youtube will notify you every single time that i make a post now with that being said we are going to jump right in first book that i have is the color of water by james mcbride and this is the story of a black man with a white mother and he was basically trying to find his identity in society um, when he asked his mom why she tended to look different in their Harlem neighborhood. And if you know anything about New York and Harlem, it is a typically historically black neighborhood. It is where you get the great creators of the Harlem Renaissance, such as Langston Hughes and Zora Neale Hurston, who I'll be sharing in just a second, as well as more. Um, so, Anyway, he noticed that his mom was different and he asked her about it and she just told him she was light skinned. But eventually he gets the full story about his white mother. Um, this is a definite must read, especially for biracial children in America who sometimes struggle with dealing with a parent that is black and a parent that is not black. And I feel like a lot of students, whether biracial or not mixed at all, can benefit from reading from this story and learning a little bit about James McBride's mother and, and how their parent, his parents were able to put 12 of them through school and educate them and how when he asked his mom the question of what color is God, she told him the color of water, which is where this title comes from. So I definitely recommend this book. It's a great read. Anyway, next book that I have is Their Eyes Were Watching God from Zora Neale Hurston. There are also several books from Zora Neale Hurston. She is most known for and notable as being one of the great literary authors of the Harlem Renaissance. Um, she has several books that tends to speak to black lives here in America and the situations of what it's like to be an African-American, especially during that time. And uh, it's still relevant today as far as what we are dealing with. So I have the special edition 75th anniversary copy of the book. I, for whatever reason, I know for sure I read this in high school, but I can't seem to find any of my high school books. Um, Their Eyes Were Watching God kind of takes a little bit of a different take. So it speaks to society standards and norms as far as black femininity. And we get that through Janie's story, who is the main character of this book. I do remember this being one of my favorite books that I read in high school. I know that current students, at least at the school that I work at, they do read this as sophomores as well, because I definitely read it as a sophomore. I definitely think it's also important for American literature or African American literature to be a prominent thing in school. Like we get English literature, we get British literature, we get um, a lot of literature from white authors, but it's super important to make sure that we're integrating the voices of 
people of color into our curriculum across the country. And so I'm super happy that my district has done so. I'm, I'm glad that the district that I grew up in made it a point to include the voices of people of color. Next book is a book that I somewhat recently purchased and I just read it last week. And so that'll be in my June reads wrap up and I might do a separate book review because this book is a little bit different and I think I want to do a comparison between this book and the next book that I'll talk about but it basically gives the story of T. Johnson or Tariq Johnson and he was killed by a white boy or a white man or whatever the case may be and so you get the different perspectives of the people that witnessed the murder you get the perspectives of the accomplice to the murder i guess you can't really call him an accomplice but he basically harbors him and hides him in his home and it just gives you so many different perspectives and it gives you a lot to think about. And it's so relevant to what we have going on in the country now with police brutality, the murders of unarmed black men and women, and there is no justice for their deaths. Like the families are still having to grieve the loss of a loved one, but they can't even feel confident in knowing that they have justice on their side so this book definitely speaks to it and like i said i'm going to do a comparison video between this book and my next book all american boys i think that both books are super relevant to the times that we are living in i think that they both have comparable plots i think that they differ definitely in a lot of ways uh, but one thing that they both have in a similar way is that they both provide multiple perspectives. So the difference between how it went down in All American Boys as far as plot, like I am going to go more in depth into the actual comparison video, but I think in regards to All American Boys, this speaks to a black young man who happens to have been brutalized by the police right and so you get the different perspective of his relationship with his his strained relationship with his father his relationship with his activist older brother you have a classmate or classmates that witnessed this but because that classmate is white he provides a different perspective and he actually happens to be family friends with the officer so you get to see kind of like how their stories relate to one another and how they're drastically different and you'll get to see like how the boys end up connecting in the end i have say her name and this is by zetta elliott and this is illustrated by love is wise now one thing that's important to note when we think about black lives matter movement and when we think about protesting police uh, brutality i think this movement has done a better job of remembering the sisters who have died at the hands of the police and remembering the sisters black women we experience racism in this country as well this author is able to put together some poems and is able to speak out and talk about the brutality that black women in america face and so we have this thing going on say her name to help you remember the black women who lost their lives to racism and police brutality and who haven't received their justice because of their death and so i love this like i said i borrowed this from the library but i will definitely once it gets back in stock a lot of these books are sold out everywhere y'all so i'm gonna still include the links I don't know when they'll get back in stock, but maybe you can start an Amazon wish list. Maybe you can create, if you are an educator, a Donors Choose project to build your classroom. Whatever the case may be, I'll still include the links down below, but I don't, I'm not an Amazon affiliate. I won't make any money. I don't get any, any nothing from me linking the Amazon books. But this is definitely a book that is going to find its way into my classroom and I'm excited to read it. Say her name next book i did not actually plan to read or focus on but it kind of reminds me of the color of water the only difference is well okay so it's very similar actually so in color me in we have this girl who grows up in harlem similar to james mcbride and his story she has a jewish mother and a black father and i'm sorry that's backwards. She has a black mother and a Jewish father. And so she goes back to her mom's hometown of Harlem 
and she's forced to deal with her biracial identity. She's forced to uh, deal with a family who, both sides of the family who feel like she's not Jewish enough and she's not white enough or she's not black enough. And I really can't imagine the struggle of a biracial child or a biracial youth or a biracial person. This has already been in my classroom. I can't remember if any students have checked it out or not, but I will be revamping and redoing my classroom library going forward. And I look forward to recording that whenever we can get back on campus. I'm super, 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 super ready for it. And um, so this is Color Me In. The last book that I actually have a physical copy of, The Water Dancer by ta Coates. Now, this book um, deals with magical realism. I know that it made Oprah Winfrey's book club. The narrator was... A slave and his mother was sold into slavery and so he's having to grow up on the plantation he's making a vow to rescue his family and I think it's a lot more than that but this book is definitely out of my comfort zone I am NOT a fantasy type reader unless it's like Disney fairy tales um, and so the fact that this book has received such wide acclaim and recognition really stood out to me and makes me want to push beyond my narrow-minded thinking of thinking that I just only like Disney fantasy, right? So I think that it's worth noting for me to read it, but I also love Tana Hasi Coates as an author, so much so that I actually have another book that's added on this list that I went and dug in the back of my closet for y'all. So some of these books that I'm about to mention, I actually do already have for my classroom. Um, it's just the problem is when I packed up my library, I didn't have time to sort the books that I wanted to bring upstairs for me to read versus the books that were going to stay downstairs all summer in the garage. The other book that I feel like should be added to this list and it's definitely worth mentioning is Between the World and Me. I actually listened to the audiobook of Between the World and Me before I actually got the physical copy of the book and I believe this has made its way into a previous book haul so you can watch that after this. I'll put, a, put it in the eye bar up here as well as down in the description box below. This is a story that I feel like every black youth needs to listen to. In my opinion, it is definitely a must read. So I love Between the World and Me. Another book that I actually have the adult copy of, but I don't have the young readers version or the young adult version, and that is Just Mercy. Now, Just Mercy is Similar to The New Jim Crow, if you've ever read The New Jim Crow, Just Mercy follows the story of Brian Stevenson, who is the founder of the EJI, the Equal Justice Initiative. And you're able to follow the story of a few clients that he have, uh, but more specifically, you're able to follow the story of Ray Hinton, who actually has his own book as well, I just discovered. So I look forward to reading that. You're able to see some of the statistics of the injustice of the criminal justice system that is supposed to be just, that is supposed to be equal, that is supposed to be fair, that is supposed to be righteous and right. And you're able to see how it's just negatively impacting the black community. And that's why I love Just Mercy. It has a movie. Currently, Warner Brothers have it. Um, where you are able to rent the movie for free. I know it is on YouTube. I know people have been watching it on Amazon Prime. So find a platform for you to be able to watch This Mercy and really watch it. I think that is powerful. The book is powerful. The movie is powerful. The message is powerful. It's just a powerful thing. It's a beautiful thing. And I'm definitely getting the young readers version. I actually think that I do have the young readers version. I'm, it's coming to my recollection. I, I bought it for my students and for my class. But again, it's in the boxes downstairs. The next book that I actually have multiple copies of, and so it's just crazy that I don't have one up here. And that's The Hate You Give. The Hate You Give can be similar to How It Went Down and um, as well as All American Boys. To me, I read The Hate You Give before I read either of those other books. The Hate You Give also has a movie that corresponds to it. Now, I don't think that movie is for free, but hey, it doesn't hurt to try. And I'll make sure to leave a link down below to Amazon where you can purchase it or whatever the case may be. But it definitely does a good job of talking about police brutality and how this teenager who witnessed her friend being killed goes through these different responses and how you get to see this young black youth who has to code switch 
um, essentially in school. And I do know a thing or two about that. The Hate You Give is a must read. I know that it, it, a lot of people love The Hate You Give. It's one of the go-to books that people tend to have. But I also think it's important to know that there's more than The Hate You Give. I do know that Angie Thomas, the author, is working on her third book. I also have On The Come Up. That is on my bookshelf over there. But to me, um, On The Come Up doesn't necessarily focus on the task of what I'm trying to get us to do here, but I also recommend it. Next book that I have the digital copy of, and I cannot get my hands on the physical copy. It's sold out everywhere, rightfully so, but I do have the digital copy because I bought it the day it came out. I was so passionate about it. And that's Stamped, the remix. And this is from Jason Reynolds, and it is based on the book from um, Ibram, Ibram X. Kendi. And that is stamped from the beginning. And I'm currently listening to that on Audible. Stamped by Jason Reynolds is like the young reader's version of Stamped from the beginning. And one of the profound things that really tends to stand out to me about Stamped both is this idea of differentiating a racist from an anti-racist, from a segregationist, from an assimilationist. And the fact that you have all of these is that exists as far as societal norms and expectations and thoughts is just mind-blowing to me and this is a book now I know my school was talking about taking off one of the books that I'm about to mention next out of the curriculum and at first I was fighting for all American boys but I definitely think that this is the book especially considering we tend to have students who are raised in biased households and you cannot take racism out of their households you cannot um <clears throat> change their heart in one classroom sitting but this book stamped is a must read for me and it's great and it provides such great history that people don't tend to learn in the school and you know, even when I took my African American studies class, I feel like, and again, I didn't go to an HBCU and that's kind of like some of the regrets that I feel. I had committed to going to Clark Atlanta University in Atlanta, but instead at the last minute, I switched to Georgia State. So I don't know what the African American studies are like at the HBCUs, but I know as far as the school that I went to, the African American studies left a lot to be desired. So reading this book, even though it was a young reader's adult, uh, young reader's version, really stuck with me and it taught me a lot about even myself and it's just it's a must read so whether you're a teacher whether you're a parent whether you're a student whatever the case may be get your hands on this book or get your hands on stem from the beginning and read it the book that we actually get to teach the book that i fought for for this year and i'm so glad that other teachers in the district fought for this book as well because i think i probably would have had a little bit of a bad understanding um, if we got rid of this book and did not provide a book from another black author and that is malcolm x by any means necessary by walter dean myers i am about to do a an adult version to this list so you're going to see me with the same attire the same face the same beat only difference is i might change my lips up a little bit because my they parched but <laughs> this is kind of like the just mercy this is kind of like the stamped where you have the just mercy young readers you have the stamped anti-racism the remix um, and you have Malcolm X by any means necessary, which is the young adult version of the autobiography of Malcolm X. And I have had the privilege of teaching this book for the past two years. And I look forward to teaching it again for the third year at the end of this year. And there's just so much that I'm able to bring in as a result of teaching that book. Um, that is where a lot of the book connections that I tend to make with these books that I have in my library come in, especially with um, Just Mercy. This year, I was able to make the connection between To Kill a Mockingbird and Just Mercy. And it was perfect when the movie came out. We had a private screening through our school. We were able to win this grant um, to have a private screening of Just Mercy. And I just so happened to have been teaching To Kill a Mockingbird at that time. So we were able to make those profound connections, right? Because it's coming from the same place in Alabama, for just mercy and i'm able to do the same thing with the autobiography of malcolm x and malcolm x by any means necessary now one of the things that i did make it a point of adding to the curriculum was bringing in 
the new Jim Crow because we get to see Malcolm X's experience with the criminal justice system and while he is responsible for committing a crime it's the fact of the inequitable punishment that he received right so he committed this crime with white women and the white women's kind of slap on the wrist but he you know had to serve this hard time and fortunately for him that's when he was able to grow in education and his brilliance but it definitely continued to show the trends of the unjust justice system that we have here in america and so i'm happy to teach malcolm x i get to show the kids the movie they loved it um, I didn't show it my first year, unfortunately, but I made it a point to do it this year and I will continue to do so going forward as well as spiraling in some of the messages of Malcolm X. Don't feel like I'm just going to be posting books about all black authors or black people now. That is going to be the norm for a couple of weeks um, as I want to continue to highlight black African-American authors. But I also think it's important to note all of the books that I have in my library that speaks to the black, indigenous, and people of color. I pride myself on building a library that is diverse and in order for me to take pride in that, I take pride in the fact that I actively seek to find more more books by people of color. And um, like I say, my school is 100% people of color. Speaking of which, I think it's definitely important to add books as these into the classroom. And I'm just going to kind of go through them quickly because I don't really have the full synopsis of all these books. I do know that they are on my, my wish list. And unfortunately, some of them too are sold out, but I think it's important to add these to the classrooms. And the one is Let's Talk About Race. Another is Woke, A Young Poet's Guide to Justice or something like that. I love the, I love the cover. It's just so cute to me. The next book is, this book is Anti-Racist. I've talked about this book before. I put it in a previous library. Book haul is definitely, in my opinion, a book that should be in every single classroom and that teachers should open their minds to reading. Another book is This Is My America, Clap When You Land. And then the last book that I am going to put on this list, I actually do physically own. Again, it is downstairs, but that is Dear Martin. And I do know that this author, Nick Stone, has another book that is coming out of something about justice. I'll make sure I put a picture of it. I think that Dear Martin is probably one of the most checked out books in my classroom library by not only my black students, but also my Latinx babies who are wanting to get a better understanding of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. or wanting to get a better understanding of what some of their peers, their black peers are experiencing here in America. And I definitely think that this book is the way to go. I have not personally read the book yet, but I do know that it is going to get read before I start this school year. I'm excited to read it. It's just my students' enthusiasm to read this book is what really, really does it for me and what really makes me excited and passionate about reading it for myself. If you have hung out this far, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Let me know that you have made it this far. If there are any books that I left out that you feel like should be highlighted from for young adults that are geared towards young adults, written by black african-american authors then please leave me a comment down below if you have any other books on diversity doesn't necessarily have to be black or african-american could be any other people of color go ahead and leave me those recommendations down below i could have them in my classroom i could not have them in my classroom you never know so i'm always looking for new books like i said i'm always looking for building my library so with that, if you haven't already subscribed, just my call to action again, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below as well as the notification bell right next to it. Check out my other previous book hauls. And with that, I will see you next time. Bye y'all.